just want to show you a really effective way of prototyping or testing the systems that you're going to be trying to put together with Microbit. Um, you know, with my really uh, fantastic system with the connector plugs that you can put in the in the big four mil diameter hole plugs that you've got here. It's good, but it only allows you to access pins zero, one, and two on the board. Well, if you look closely at the micro bit, there are a lot of separate tracks in between those pins. Micro bit has actually quite got quite a few more um, uh, connections on the breakout board. So I'm going to use this thing called a prototyping system. Now, this is a piece of what we call breadboard. I'll try and explain how that works in a minute. And the uh, end of this uh, thing here is called a lift connector, a low insertion force connector. So you get the micro bit and you gently, okay, push against it as you're pushing in, just slot it in. Now make sure that buttons A and B are facing upwards and that you can see the five by five LED matrix. Okay, let me try and explain how this works then. So that now is slotted into a series of connections inside here that are exited through these pinouts that we get here. So I've got a row of metal pins that are numbered. So if you've got eagle eyesight, you can see now that you've got numbers that go right up to something like 26. And you've also got pins for zero or GND and 3V. You've got a couple of those that you can access. So we can take a signal from the micro bit from one of these pins and we can take it over to this prototyping area, this whiteboard by here. So this is our proto board or bread board, we call it. So let me try and explain how the breadboard works. So the breadboard is connected in different ways depending on where you are. So first of all, the outer two tracks, that's this row going along here, the long row, and the one next to it, are joined together on the length of the board. So if I put something in this pin by here and something in the pin down the end, they would be joined together. If I go along to the next one, if I put something in that pin and the pin next to it, that would be joined together. And the same happens on this side of the board. So something connected on this pin would be connected to anything else on that same long row. Something connected to this pin would be connected to something anything else on that same pin. OK, now the middle pins don't work the same. The middle tracks don't work the same. OK, so these are connected in short rows. So anything connected in the same row, one, two, three, four, five holes that you can get to there will be joined. Same with that one, same with that one, same with that one. So these individual short tracks are joined together going across the short way. And you'll notice that there's a gap in the middle. So this row of five is not connected to the row of five that's opposite it. Okay, so I know that takes a little bit of getting used to, but you can now use that idea to build circuits. So you can see what I've got here is a basis of a circuit that I'm gonna go into a bit more depth. So this circuit here uses an LED but not like an LED that I've showed you in class, right? This is what we call an RGB LED. So most LEDs have got two legs, an anode and a cathode, a plus and a minus, and you can tell them apart because one's longer than the other. This one has got a cathode, which is the long leg, and then it's got channels that it uses for red, green, and blue. And if I turn these pins on in a combination of, of ways, I can tune this RGB LED to make any color I want, right? So the long leg there is gonna go into a track on its own, because I need to connect that to the minus, and the other legs are gonna go into rails that are connected to a little thing called a resistor. So I don't know if I can get any closer to so show you that and still be in focus. That's working quite well. Okay, so if I just twizzle that around a little bit, you can see the legs on my RGB LED, that's my one channel. That goes to the same row as you know what, I'm one, I'm one row across, aren't I? I need to be over one more like that. Just pop that in there. Oops, Daisy, try not to bend the legs of the LED as you put it in. Okay, that's better. Right, so that leg now, the one on the left, is connected to the same row as this resistor. It goes up, and then it goes into the same row as, let's have a look here now, it goes into the same row as this yellow cable. And this yellow cable goes into channel two on my micro bit. So channel two is controlling this leg of the LED. This leg is not connected to anything. Look at this row of five, there's nothing else on there. I'm gonna take a minus wire and I'm gonna fly that one over to my zero V roll. So here's what we do with our wires. Look, we get these things called jumper leads. And jumper leads have got a female end to them. That's this end here. They've also got a male end to them. Now that's really useful because if you just peel one of these jumper leads off. So I've got a long black lead with 
one pin and one socket. So what I do now is I get my pin and I put that pin into the same row as my minus leg of my LED. So that's now joined into that second row along, like where I'm going to try and point to it with my pencil. So that row there, like you can see, has got the black pin in it. And I'm going to take that black pin and I'm going to put it into the negative 0V, which is um, by there, without my glasses on. I'm pretty sure it's there. Okay, so that system now is ready for me to write a bit of code to. All I need to do is connect the, the uh, programming cable and a power lead to the micro bit to power out the micro bit. And with this system, an LED, so it's fairly low power, so I can power that directly from the micro bit. On some of your experiments you're going to do, you probably need to provide a little bit more power for the micro bit. So you might be looking at another battery source that allows you to power the components on the board. I'll try and explain that a bit better in class. Okay, but have a good old think about that. I've got four of these boards floating around in class. If you want to have a go, follow the video and see if you can get your head around how the prototyping system works. You can just start off with one LED and a resistor if you want to, just to get it working, and uh, then build it up from there. But a very good way to test your circuits.